Hi, beautiful souls. Welcome to Starseed Gathering, my beautiful podcast that I do on my YouTube channel. I'm, my name is Annabelle Ivai. I'm your host. I'm a deep soul healer, intuitive guide, and I'm super excited to connect with Amanda with you today. She's in Mexico, beautiful soul, on the other side that I was at, and she's on the beautiful island of Isla Mujeres, and she's going to talk about a bit of her awakening, which she's offering to help others and everything everything that is ready dear to her heart, divine feminine, and so much more. Welcome, beautiful soul. Hello. Thank you for having me, Annabelle. Um, oh, this is such a beautiful time right now um, with where we're at. There's a, a great mother energy that is rising within all of us. Um, and so I've been in Mexico now, uh, September will be three years that I've, I've got here um, since I've been here. And my journey has been quite a journey. Um, I was, before I came to Mexico, I was in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, I was a personal trainer for 22 years, as well as I had stepped into some fascial body work for seven years. And so I was very well versed with the body, the physical body. And, um, but I also had been kind of going through my spiritual kind of consciousness, I would like to say kind of came online when I was 28. Um, so back in probably 2012, 2013, um, it kind of came online where my curiosity kind of was like, all right, what is this? What is this? Oh, psychics. Oh, they can tell the future. Oh, they know about me. I'm like, Wow. <laughs> um, so I knew like, and, and I'm coming from, you know, being born, raised Catholic in the middle of farm fields, you know, in the middle of Illinois. And, and, you know, it just very different. I, I would like to call myself kind of the black sheep of the family. And, you know, from, from being able to leave the house, and I've kind of just gone further and further away. And so I, I came to Mexico um, for a wedding. And I decided to bring in my 40th birthday on an island off of Cancun called Isla Mujeres. And when I came here, it, it's only it's four miles long, and a half mile wide. So can you <laughs> imagine this tiny island? And, and I have now almost lived here three years. Um, and this island had pulled me from this bustling, happening, huge city in Minneapolis all the way down. And, um, you know, I my spiritual kind of awakening, I would like to say it, truly happened here on this island. Um, I kind of Prior to coming to the island, I tapped into a couple different tools such as gene keys, human design, and, you know, not knowing much about them um, because I truly feel like when you're ready to learn, there's something inside the mind that just kind of opens up for you to actually like not just read it, but to soak it in, to really like allow it to go down into the heart truly understand it. And so I, I wasn't, there's all these different tools that we have out there, right? There's amazing people who have tapped into some amazing outlets of energy to share with us who we are. But until you're ready, you're not ready. And so once I came to the island, um, I realized that I wasn't ready yet. I wasn't secure in who I was. And so I, I came to that crossroads and I took a path that wasn't ready for my soul. And I enjoyed it. I had fun. I mean, like all of us, this island is a tourist destination. I tell people when they come visit this island, this island is the whole world in four miles and a half mile wide. Literally, you will find everything on this island. And you can go left or you can go right. It's your choice. Um, and so, you know, I I went a different route when I got here, the normal route that everyone goes. And it was okay. And so about after a year and a half of being here, spent all my money, 
and didn't know what I was going to do because I didn't have any plan. I just listened to the divine inside of me that said, you had to move and move to Mexico to this island. <laughs> so I get here and um, I asked to follow love. I said, I'm ready for love. What does love really mean? That's such a big question. I, I want everyone to ask themselves, what is love? Because in my eyes, in those moments, love was someone coming into my life to give me love. <laughs> what a paradox. I had to learn over the last year and a half that that wasn't true love, unconditional love. Um, and so the past year and a half has been a roller coaster of me just stepping into new parts of myself, um, shedding new parts of myself, letting go, releasing um, the parts of me that no longer is ready for this new step in our lives to go into. Um, and so, you know, I came here wanting to do retreats. And then once I jumped into all of this stuff, I'm like, well, how can I do retreats when I don't even know who I am? You know, you know, it's interesting to learn what the mind is and what the heart is. And so, you know, I, I really had to like take the time to become a hermit and truly get to know who I am. I had to do the inner work. I had to do the shadow work. Um, I would never second guess my intentions until I went through the shadow work, which truly made me go deeper into my true intentions. Um, it's, it's quite amazing when you actually strip away the shadows to understand who you are. Um, and through that, stripped away my wealth, stripped away everything that I thought I needed to be me. And, you know, I had to learn a lot of hard lessons. Um, I don't think I could have learned those lessons living in the United States. Hmm. Right. I had to come down to Mexico where I'm not legally allowed to work. I had to come down to Mexico to be able to sit in an essence of this beautiful feminine energy who was going to hear my cries, who was going to embrace me with her sweetness and to allow my cries to go back into the water and be washed away. Um, if, if anyone has ever been to this island, we'll know the water here, the beaches here. There's something very special. Um, something that had come to me over the last year and a half was this beautiful meditation, breathwork, connection to the beach the, and to the water. And so I started this kind of meditation water work um, where I, I take people into, I say, the, the wound of Ishel hmm. because the water that surrounds this island, because this island is a, it's called the Island of Women because the goddess Ishel is the energy that surrounds and protects this island. And so the Maya women would bring their their daughters who are going right going through fertility going through puberty would they would take a uh, a journey from the mainland and come to the island and stay on the island until Ishel gifted 
their child, their period, to become fertile. And then they would travel back to the mainland, back to where their tribes live. And a woman, a Maya woman, would come to either Cosmel or um, Isla twice in her life. And she was a child. And when she bore children, would come back to this island. And so when the pirates came, they saw little figures of women. And they were like, what is this? And so that's kind of how it got its name as Isla Mujeres, the island of women. Um, and there's ruins in the south part of the island that the, the Maya women would come. And I know, I think it was either the second or third time that I went to Punta Sur, where the ruins are. I actually saw myself as a little Maya girl walking up this pathway. And I just started crying and I knew that I was being called back. And I, I truly believe that every woman that comes here and feels the energy of the Island who comes to go through this healing work, because I'm not just the only woman, single woman who has taken this journey to come move to Islam Harris by herself. There's been many women that I've met along this path since I've been here for the last three years who have come here by themselves, who come and visit on their own. But there is some, there's a reason why the energy is calling you to come to this island to heal, to take back that divine feminine energy, to reactivate it within us. And so something that I have started and I am putting it out there is, is having a divine solo destination retreat. So you can come to the Island and, and spend as long as you need. Um, I always say at least seven days. Um, and we will sit and connect to the energies of the Island, connect to your own healing powers within yourself. Um, because the divine feminine energy is something that is so important for all of us, men and women. This isn't just for, for women. This is also for men. Um, Cause it's very important that we activate this within us. Um, so then going forward, we can start to see the changes in, in this world on this earth. And so um, I'm welcoming anyone that, feels drawn to coming to the island to connect with me. And I would love to help co-create something very special with you. Um, you know, I, the energies that she's been giving me is connecting me to the medicine woman, um, taking me to the underground worlds and showing me a lot of things. Um, I, 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 I believe that, we're never done growing. We're always the student. Um, we get a point where we become the teacher. But as long as you understand, there's an even balance of the student and the teacher always within us. Um, but yeah, so here I am. <laughs> this is such a wonderful. We were speaking before the, the podcast started the recording and it's just, been such a wonderful privilege to learn about you and what you've been able to create for yourself and allowed yourself to connect to because as you were saying that's what's happening right when we are in this very busy life we don't actually connect in I've been disconnected to my divine feminine and divine masculine my whole life until at some point it was a breaking point I was like okay no more you have to change something because there's so much more to this life than this busy life that you think is the only thing that has to happen and you having more you know work and then maybe earning more money and then this and that and just like chasing something that is not really fulfilling and then we're invited into this sacred pause, however that looks like. Sometimes it's through trauma, sometimes it's accident, sometimes it's like, hey, like this divine invitation to go to Mexico and be like, 
oh my God, like I actually could live here. This is really cool. Why not? Right. And then, and then how wonderful that you actually allowed yourself to, to do the move because a lot of people will have this little nudge. Okay. You should be doing this or you should go there. And they won't follow that because they're scared because they have a word because they don't know how they're going to live. And you know, all of the 3d questions we all have, but if it's your divine path, you're going to have support. You're going to have everything you need along the way. It might not be the same life as you have before because you're leaving something not to recreate it somewhere else, but you're going to have something different, different experiences and different people you're going to meet and different things you're going to connect to within you. And it's just going to bloom into something so beautiful. And I love those retreats that you're offering. Uh, we don't see a lot of those one-on-ones uh, retreat out there. I haven't seen a lot of those. So I think it's really, really cool that you're offering that. And if anyone wants to connect, there's very something very special. You all know I lived in Mexico for five years, and I know this part of Mexico as well, less than you because I haven't lived there. But um, there is something very special in healing in Mexico. A lot of of people Mexicans that I've met in my life were saying that it's the heart chakra of this planet like there's so mm. much loving energies and Mexicans have the huge biggest heart of the whole world and they make us feel so much at home and that you know Spanish or not like they're gonna welcome you as you are there's so much beautiful energies there so if you're feeling that you need this sacred pause and that you need someone that can actually hold you while you're going through a transformation, because I'm pretty sure that people would get, come with you. And on the other side of this week or whatever amount of days they will spend with you, they will be different on the other side. Uh, please reach out to Amanda. Please, please. It's really, really cool. I'm super excited for everyone that's going to connect with you through that, that beautiful service that you're offering to the planet. Beautiful. I love that you called it a sacred pause. Because truly, it is. And and we honestly need more sacred pauses in our life. You know, the one thing I learned through following Gene Keys is that I take four, I try to, I try to, I take, well, actually, I do more than that. Um, four, you know, the, he does a three-minute sacred pauses where you take three minutes just to be. You know, one thing I've learned about living here is just to be is to let go of what is coming next and to be in this moment. And if there's nothing that I need to do, to be okay with that. Everyone thinks that they, especially coming from the United States, which where I came from, that I always have to have something to do. If I'm not doing something, then I am lazy. Mm -hmm. I am. I, and, and, and a lot of that was a lot of deconditioning because I'm a projector in human design. And, you know, I, I was always working six days a week. I, I, you know what I mean? And when I'm, and I, if I'm not doing something productive, then that means that I am failing. I am doing something wrong. And um, also in that doesn't even just mean um, doing something for work. That all also means constantly having to go out to be with people, to not be able to be alone with yourself. Um, I absolutely love being with myself. And that can be a detriment too, because then that also keeps me from, because I know a part of, a big part of me is being with people to help, you know, be in a space of, of, of connection and, and healing through connection. Um, but being able to be by myself is one of the most beautiful things anyone can be in that space of, you know, um, I've never been married. Um, I've never really had any long-term relationships and I always thought something was wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with me. I've only been divinely protected and that's it. And when the time is right for me to bring in those right relationships, they will come. And I think a lot of, of, especially women, we think that something's wrong with us. You know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with being in your 40s and being single. It is the best time to truly get to know who you are. Um, mm -hmm. 
And so, you know, I, I love working with women in their 40s and 50s, you know, who are in that space of, of that. Because a lot of times we don't truly know until you pause and take a stop to ask yourself, why can I not be in my feminine energy? Because they're hiding some stuff deep, deep inside themselves. They feel guilty and shameful and all these things. And all I want to do is hold a beautiful space to allow them to see there's nothing wrong with them. Mm. There's nothing wrong with us. There's nothing wrong if you've never been married. There's nothing wrong if you've never had children. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, uh, one, I did a mushroom ceremony. My first, my first true plant medicine I did in Minneapolis before I came down here with a couple girls. It was just us. It was beautiful. I had spirit come to me and said, you are the mother of a thousand children. I'm like, what does that mean? Like what, you know, and I pondered that, like, what is that? What is that? What is that? You know, you, you, and it, it took years to truly understand what is that? I'm a mother no matter if I have children and I don't have children. I'm here to take care of God's children <laughs> and nurse awesome. them and love them as if they're my own. Exactly. And, and you're right. I think, you know, being a healer in itself, however that looks like, you know, we are taking care of others and we have this motherly energy that's coming through. And, you know, we're being given this, this beautiful gift of connecting through our heart and, and supporting people in in their the part parts of their life that even sometimes their own mothers isn't in there for them to support them. So I think it's it's being grateful for what we can share. Um and I love what you're sharing about I'm in the same, I don't have children, I'm in my 40s, I don't, you know, I don't I'm single right now and and it's, yeah, there's a, a bit of a social pressure, right? It's like, oh, okay, like I should be married and have all of these kids and have a house and <laughs> whatever it is. But no, right? It's just, there's no one what's for all. And we all have our different unique path. And as long as you follow what's the most important to you, then as you said, then right people will come along when it's time and there's, it's, it's like, even if we look at all of the people that are following the conformity, they're not so much more happy anyway, right? So it's like, maybe we have a different life, but um, as long as you're feeling that you're whole and that you're in this oneness with you and yourself, then you're okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I, you know, one thing I would love to like, just share with people and I just want them to like, just look at it on themselves because what I've realized is when you start to like take perspective, right? Take, take your perspective of life. And then I want you to switch that, change that perspective. Life is a paradox. Everything that you think is right. Flip it around and look at it from a different perspective. And you'll find truth in that different perspective more so than you're going to find truth in what you thought was true all along. Right. That's so Aquarian of you to share that. <laughs> 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 we were talking about that earlier. <laughs> I love that though. I love that. Yeah. Being able to see different perspective on everything is just such eye opening, you know, and I, I know what you did because I did a few of that, those type of travel without knowing what was going to happen. Right. You take the leap. You're like, you're like, I know something is going to be there to hold me when I get there, but I don't know what. And okay, uh, I'm going to give you, I want to give, I want to just throw this. This happened to me because this is something that's big. And it's like, ah, oh, you need to start doing more of this paradox thing and, and talk about paradoxes. Because truly, once you start to see your perspective and you change that perspective to the complete opposite or a, a, another way of it, you'll start to see, oh, life is really showing me that I'm not choosing the right things. Like your mind likes to like mess you up. Your mind is truly not in the heart of things, mm -hmm. right? So I had two pairs of sandals. One pair is just kind of 
feet go in a little loose, like nothing that I would want to wear if I'm going on a major walk or anything like that. And then I have a pair that are Tevas and they're like more secure and they wrap around my ankle. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to take the more secure, I'm going to wear the more secure sandals when I go out on my meditation walk, you know? So I put on the more secure sandals and I sit down, I go to my bird sanctuary area. Then I walk all the way up to the coast and the ocean and I do my meditation on the ocean. And then I stop and I get to another place along the coast and I stand there and I just look out and I I give so much gratitude. All of a sudden I start walking. One of my sandals, my secure sandals, The soul is literally halfway flopping off that sandal. And now I don't know how to walk because the back, the bottom is like flopping as I'm trying to step forward. And I'm like, this didn't happen this whole time around. And literally I'm walking back to the house and this happens. Why? I'm like, oh, I see you. Okay. Because I put that this shoe is more secure, right, than the other shoe. I put a label on it. Instead of just choosing one or the other, I had to label it, identify it as one way better than the other. So I want people, when they when they get choices, is to not look at something as being better or more secure or, or even just identifying it as, as greater than or less than. And to choose something that your heart says yes to, mm. not what the mind says. Definitely. I love that. Yeah, because it's such like something that I'm trying my best to help people connect to because it's like the heart has all of their answers. You can do all, watch all of those card readings and go to all of those psychics, but your heart knows you the best. And yeah. you're right. We, we label so many things, so many relationships, so many stuff around us and within us. And, 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 you know, how many times do we actually find in the weaknesses, the strength and in the challenges actually the beauty of being redirected to what is truly our true divine path so i love what you're sharing right yeah. there it's so such a beautiful thing everything in life it's the opposite it truly is your challenges your weaknesses is the path that scares you is the path that you need to go exactly because <laughs> definitely <laughs> it, it really is because the mind does not want the mind is scared of the power that we hold within us yeah we are lose control most, right it wants to control right? you but in the controlling we're not yeah. actually experiencing anything that expands our consciousness that expands us our heart and actually creates us this beautiful experience as a human being here yeah i was saying that to to a few of my clients this week it's like if it's scary it's because you have to do it otherwise you wouldn't have this fear of doing it <laughs> yeah I mean I sold everything I came to Mexico you know what I mean by myself with my dog you know and if I was to listen to what media and what my father and all my my family were like so worried and scared for me and like what are you going to do like what about retirement what about a job what about all of this 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 what about it I don't care when I if I would have allowed all of those obstacles all of those negative thought processes of other people to affect my choice and decision I wouldn't be on this amazing beautiful path of joy bliss, happiness, tranquility, peace, helping the world change. Mm. I want to be here. I can so relate to all of that that you said. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I left my hometown the first time I was 24 and everybody was like, you're gonna, it's gonna be dangerous and you don't even speak the language how is it gonna go and blah, 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 blah. and yeah and it's like 
we are here to be different. We are here to work our own yeah. unique path. You know, it's not because everybody's going that direction that you need to go there. What is your heart telling you that you're supposed yeah. to be doing right now? And I love that you're sharing your inspiring, very, very inspiring story. Beautiful. Yeah. I, if, if anything, I hope that whoever needs that extra push to do it, I hope my story can tell them to do it. I hope it pushes them a little more to just follow what truly is meant to be. Definitely. No, oh, such a beautiful sharing. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, beautiful Amanda. No. If you want to connect with her, we will leave all of her details below. Don't be shy um, and just follow her stories and everything that she's doing and um it was such a pleasure and i i can see so many correlation and we just tip touch the tip <laughs> of the iceberg but i can see a lot of correlation oh, yeah. be between her, her, her um her life stories that's for sure so it's beautiful thank you for your courage thank you for being such a beautiful ambassador for the divine feminine thank you for your sacred pauses retreat that you're sharing with the world oh. it's beautiful beautiful Yes, I'm, I'm really excited for what's to come. So um, and like you said, anyone that feels drawn to want to connect, I am here. I know I'm not for everybody. I have to learn that too, the hard way, you know, but <laughs> <It's fine>. you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Those people that see that they're ready for this change, because I have a very strong, powerful spirit soul that really taps in and says, let's do this. Um, and not everyone's ready for it. So, exactly. And you'll feel it in your heart. You'll feel excited and excitement or even a little bit of fear. But then you'll get a connect oh, you with Amanda. To, exactly, exactly. You only have to come down for seven days. <laughs> right. And you'll see how it goes. Oh, it's such a pleasure. Thank you so much oh, for your time. Your you. divine codes of light that you're sharing oh. with us and um it's a pleasure and and uh, let's do this again soon absolutely and you're welcome <laughs> to come back down too <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> the message is for annabelle too <laughs> soul is like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i love it thank you beautiful oh i love you thank, thank you, you so much. thank you